Hello everyone, I'm uh, Jeff Krieger from Whitby and we're going to be uh, talking about uh, quality of experience. It's, um, I'm, I'm a little overly passionate about this because you know, I, I feel like you know, we all owe our livings to the, the uh, consumers that are home you know, watching the content and providing a, um, a really good experience for them it should be really important for all of us and it's, it's honestly not that hard and we can help you out with it. So your brand appears in a lot of places. Um, uh, and you want to make sure that there's uh, harmonization across all those brands or all those devices. Um, and you want to have a one-to-one -one relationship with your viewer, but you know, sometimes you just can't do that. And uh, one of the biggest problems is your brand is going out over a lot of different um, uh, 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 delivery paths to multiple devices, on to multiple uh, 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 platforms, and you've got to maintain a consistent, you know, um, uh, 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 experience for your customer, and but how can you do that when there's so many different places they can see your content? So if you add Whitby to your brand, we can help you out with that. So uh, our devices are connected at the edge where your customers are uh, consuming the content, so then you can then uh, do a live view to see what that looks like, but you can also uh, do some testing and measurement. We're going to go, we're going to look at some use cases here in a minute or two, but let me explain why Whitby is, is so important to, to doing that. So, Multi-service, we can look at any type of product that where your, your content is sent out. Uh, Multi-device, any kind of device, we can do anything from a set-top box to a gaming console to a uh, mobile device uh, to a smart TV. And the smart TV application is really cool and if anybody wants to see it afterwards, we'll show it to them. Uh, and then multi-network, it can be uh, however your content's delivered. Um, and how does it work? Well, we provide uh, uh, QA automation, so um, uh, and uh, so we'll, I'll get to that in a second, but in the, in the next slide, but just really quickly, uh, uh, we're doing uh, proactive monitoring, so we're constantly looking 24-7 at, your, at um, how your content's displayed on, on different devices, um, and we're also doing benchmarking. So if you're an OTT service and you want to see how well you're performing in a certain market against other uh, um, services in the similar category, we can benchmark and that way you can make sure that your uh, delivery is happening uh, as you'd expect it. Um, all of this is done with, uh, with what we call our robots. Uh, the robots are uh, working full time behind the scenes uh, based on the scenarios that you need to have uh, um, measured. Uh, which is completely up to you, um, but the, the, the robots are doing things that humans can't. Uh, you, know, you can't get a human to work 24 hours a day. Uh, you can't get them to give you, um, uh, the, the, you know, similar results over multiple devices, um, but our robots can do that. Um, we have two different um, sort of products or services. One is on-prem, which is, here's, a, here's where the journey sort of starts. This is a wit box. Um, you connect it to whichever device that you want to have measured. Uh, you can put it in your head end. If you have a cousin that has AT&T and you verse at their house and you want to uh, uh, keep an eye on that, we can do that too. You can put it in your lab and connect any device that you want. Um, this is just one unit. This is the Witbox. We also have a Witbox Plus where you can connect up to four devices. Um, so that's the on-premises application. Uh, the other is, is in the cloud. Uh, and it can be a dedicated device. So for example, if you said uh, we needed a, we need to uh, take a look at the OI uh, box in Brazil, then we can set that up for you so that you'll have 24 seven unrestricted access. Um, you can uh, review the content whenever you want, take a look at the platform, take a look at the signal. Uh, we'll get into a second all the scenarios we can run on that, uh, but you can, you can do that uh, with the on-premises. Uh, or I'm sorry, with the cloud, uh, uh, with, with our device, which we'll uh, take care of for you. Or you can do the on-demand application. This is for maybe a, a, a programmer that wants to check 40 or 50 titles a month over 30 different devices, and we handle that for you. We provide all the reporting back to you, uh, and you're going to be able to see exactly what your, what your viewers see. Um, it's really as easy as one, two, three. So first thing is the setup. This is where we sit down and talk to you about what your goals are and what you're trying to accomplish, what your KPIs are, and we help you understand how uh, the, uh, um, uh, the scripts are written. Uh, and it, again, it could be something very si simple or something that's very complex, but you need to just run it over and over again to make sure that it's working as expected. Um, the next thing we do is we measure that. So this is when our devices really go to work. So this is based on the scenarios that um, we're, we're, we're helping you uh, uh, write or your, 
your team is writing uh, themselves. And then the last thing is the analysis, which is really you know, kind of what your, uh, the reason you'd want to do business with us, because a lot of this you can do yourself, but uh, if you're out gathering this information, then you're not analyzing it. So the, we're, we're making it far easier for you to see what a customer sees uh, on whichever device you want to measure, but the, really the most valuable part is the analysis. Uh, and so now you don't have to take the time to do that. We, we, uh, we provide that for you, That's those services for you. So I'm going to go through a few use cases here. This is when I slow down because this is the kind of the more interesting part. So take a look at this. This is what we call our rec screen. Um, and this is a, a wit box. It's uh, connected to, uh, um, to, in this case, a device that shows a, it's a Verizon. Um, we're, the, 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 uh, the customer that would be using this, they're, uh, they're, they're, they want to look at that um, signal 24-7. So they want to be able to control the box, which if you see the remote control, it's exactly the remote control that you'd be using if you were sitting on the couch and you're a Fios customer. Uh, from that, you can create macros. You can do very complex tasks very simply with a single click, or then that's when you create the scenarios, which we'll get to in a second here, and you'll see how the scenarios apply to simple macros, but the macros that have been exploded to do a lot more things. Um, this is really for full-time monitoring. Um, think of it almost as a, um, a, um, uh, a virtual knock, so that you can, if you have 10 devices that you want to monitor, or 100 devices, uh, we can handle that for you, and what, what your, you know, you, it's credentialed access, so that if, for instance, your team in, I don't know, Orlando, Florida, needs to look at only, uh, you know, 10 of the 100 uh, different um, devices that we're monitoring, they can look at that, and then through our uh, setting up of SSO for all of your employees, we can then uh, set up a whole different section uh, for, for them to uh, check out a, a different uh, set of devices. Um, here's an MVPD that's proactively monitoring signals for better uptime. So in this case, there's, there's a couple different applications here, but they might have 20 head ends and they have three different set-top boxes. So they'd use what, our Witbox Plus. They would connect uh, each of the set-top boxes and each of the head ends. Uh, and then, then anyone on their team can see specifically what's happening in that, you know, out of that head end. And when a signal goes low, when your audio goes low, whenever there's a problem, we send notifications out, and then your engineering team can you know, address that. But they're going to see what the customer's seeing before the customer actually has an opportunity to call in and complain that, the, you know, that their favorite channel is, is not up and running. Um, there we go, hold on. Uh, here's uh, test automation, and what you're seeing up there, those are the, the scenarios that we can build or you can build. Um, and uh, this is done for uh, anyone who wants to do highly repetitive tasks that are, uh, you don't necessarily want to um, task with, uh, for, a, for a, an employee to do, because you want to run it 24 seven on multiple devices. And again, where this becomes very useful is that if you have a development team in India, a development team in Denver, and you're looking at a, a, a device uh, or multiple devices that are, say, outside of Philadelphia, uh, you want them to have the actual experience on that device, and uh, they can do that. Uh, our, although it's not in here, uh, the, the, the way we've been able to do this on uh, mobile devices and uh, smart TVs is, is really uh, is pretty, is pretty interesting, and the, the folks that use it get a lot of value out of being able to see exactly what the customers see every time they do a new build of their code. Um, oh, also our boxes are uh, 4K, uh, Dolby 5.1, we can work with um, uh, IR, RF, or Bluetooth, um, which is uh, very unique in the space. Um, and uh, let's go to the next slide. Uh, this is uh, VOD uh, library reporting. So in this case, a, um, uh, a streaming service wants to look at how their uh, content is appearing in multiple territories. So they want to know if content goes up on time, if content is taken down. And sure, they can see a lot of that on their end, but what they can't really see, because they're in one location, they can't see how that applies to multiple devices in a territory that they're not in. So we give them that visibility by bringing the edge closer to them. Um, so in this case, they're, they're uh, taking a look to make sure that their content is appearing on time uh, as, uh, as, as, uh, as it should. There we go. And um, last use case, is when a network wants to make sure that their episodes are fully deployed. So this is the one that I really love because that's sort of the world I came from. Um, so we're looking at multiple uh, um, uh, uh, devices, set-top boxes and, and um, 
couple uh, mobile devices, and uh, our robots are going to work to take a look specifically at whether or not the titles were added when they should have or taken down when they uh, should have. And yesterday we did a, a test where um, they were trying to make sure that um, assets weren't being added to the platform too early because unfortunately somebody in their license window start uh, time had forgot to put the actual time, they put the date, so they had some, uh, some big content that was appearing at 12.01 a.m. You know, local time when it should have waited till nine or 10 o'clock at night. So in that case, we're not testing whether something uh, is, isn't up and it should be, or uh, uh, um, uh, is, should be taken down, but did somebody on their, you know, in their metadata group accidentally uh, make a, um, a, a, an unnecessary change to the metadata which exposed their content too early? In this case, they didn't want the fans to, um, they didn't want the fans to, to, uh, uh, to get on social media and say that the title that they thought was going to air later that night actually aired a, aired a little bit earlier in the day. Um, but let's talk about what happens with the monitoring notifications, because this is really one of the most important things that we can provide to a company like that. So in this case, the scenario I just discussed is they're looking for, um, for a VOD asset on multiple platforms and multiple devices. So we're looking at the title, uh, that's what we're keying off of, and uh, we're doing customized notifications. So here's five platforms and there's five checks. You can see the blue ones, that means that everything checked out fine. The red ones mean that it didn't check out fine. So then what we do is we go back and we do another check, and in this case, the, the red one now turns blue because everything's fine, but down here on this platform, it's still not been published. So before, they weren't aware of this. They, they, they might, you know, again, a, uh, a fan might say, hey, I can't find my show on this platform, but they didn't know how to address it. So there we go, we do one more test, it shows up blue, they're happy, but all along this path, they're getting these notifications. So they're being told that, yes, your title's there, no, it's not, but what's actually really important is what goes into showing them that it's available. So take a look here, this is a clear message, and in this case it's show name, season episode, network is now available on this platform. Um, and uh, then if you click here where it says more details, you get all the details about what happened. So up here we can see all the data about the show, the name of the show, et cetera. This is a video, so every time we go in and we take a look, uh, we're recording that session so that they can go in and take a look and see exactly what happened for us to get there and positively identify the content. Um, it, there's, there's value in that, but the value is, is probably, it's not just that the content's there, now they can go in and they can see here on the Xfinity platform, how do you get to my content? What does it look like? Uh, what's the path that the customer has to take? Um, over here, we've got the video and audio quality analysis so they can see if there, there's an issue. There's not on this one, everything was fine, content was delivered, customer's happy, but when the customer's not happy, it's when their content doesn't show up on the, on the platform. Same layout here, so you can see we're, we're identifying exactly which show it is, uh, from which network. Click down here, more details about the alarm, and you'll see that there's no video quality analysis, and we can show them exactly the time we did the test, so now they have proof, if they have to reach out to the platform or their transport provider, or anybody that's helping them provision this content to, to show them that, that it's not there. So now they have, the, and they also have the video here that they can share. So we're, all, we're also set up to, this can go internally to a, uh, to a network's uh, uh, VOD ops team, but we can also send that out to the transport provider um, and the platform also. So everybody's on the same page. So when your title doesn't show up at you know, 1201 in the morning because of a metadata issue or because uh, the platform has a cutoff for when content's delivered or um, there's an issue with your transport provider or, you know, there's this much content, uh, C3 content trying to go into a pipe that's this big, you've got all the information where you can track it back. So, again, because, it, because it's timestamped, because we have the video, it's a really a, a powerful tool to share with you know, the, your transport provider or the platform to show them that, you know, just because a customer calls and it says something's not there, well, you need a little more information about that. You know, maybe why isn't it there? And we'll find in these, in these checks that all sorts of issues. We had an interesting one uh, last week where it said that the title wasn't available, but when you watch the video, really what was happening, it was a 404 error on the platform side. So it was getting all the way there, and then when we got to the container um, for, for the content in that episode, the 404 pops up. So the, 
in that case, the, the client may have thought that maybe you know, we were having a problem because we were misreporting, but we weren't because we could show them the 404 area, then the 404 error, and then they could go to the platform and try to figure out why are we throwing multiple 404s on our content because we weren't seeing this with any other, um, with any other uh, programmer that we were, were doing a similar test for. Um, that's, I went a little fast, I know, but um, like I said, I'm passionate about this and if you have questions you can ask or you can come down here, but this is a list of um, some of the folks that have used us and you can see, you know, you recognize that everybody loves the big wall of, uh, of logos, but those folks trust us with, you know, ensuring that their uh, quality of experience is, is, uh, uh, is, is excellent and, they're, and that we meet their QA goals and that they can track their KPIs because now we give them the tools to do that. Um, before it was a little bit of a, you know, kind of a crapshoot, whether or not you were going to be able to back into why your title wasn't showing up um, or why a, a network goes down um, at certain periods of the day uh, because all that's trackable because we're recording all that um, or why your, uh, maybe a new build of your, your app isn't working quite right on, one, uh, on, a, on, a, on a device. Because if, you're, if your team's in Brazil, you can't, you can't just ship them another device to see if they can test it there. You want everybody to test it in one unified device from multiple locations um, and then you can get the results that make your product that much better. So uh, I, don't, I don't think we're doing Q&A up here, but like I said, if you want to step down there, we'd love to answer some questions just down to the right. And uh, I, think that's, I think that's it. I've given you back a, three minutes of your day. Thank you very much.